Hello, I'm doing a book review, and the book I want to review is The Thrill of Repulsion, Excursions into Horror Culture by William Burns. Now, this was published in 2016. It was published this year, and this is a collection of interviews and reviews and articles and top ten lists and essays all on the horror genre. Now, William Burns is actually an English professor, and he teaches classes on literature, and he also does a class on horror films, and he also used to write for Horror News Network. Now, William Burns is actually a personal friend of mine, and I have an interview with him that I'm going to show at the end of this review. Now, I'll admit that I'm actually recording this review before I go do the interview with him, so I don't know if the interview is going to end up being longer than the actual review, but I guess we'll both find that out the hard way. Now, reviewing books by people that you actually know is always tricky because you always run the risk of being accused of being biased, and I'm even though this is a positive review, I'm going to try to not come off like I'm kissing this guy's ass because I know him in real life. Now, I've always been a huge horror fan. Like, I love movies in general, but I definitely think horror is my favorite genre. I mean, if you look at my DVD collection, I would say that maybe 80% of the movies that I own are horror films. Now, I have a lot of friends who like horror films as well, but I honestly do think that uh, William Burns' views on the horror genre are actually the closest to... Uh, of all the people that I know, his views on the horror genre are honestly the closest to my own personal views on the genre. Now, I've always found the horror genre to be such a disrespected genre, even within its own fan base, because there are so many people who scoff at the horror genre, or even people who say they like horror films kind of just shrug it off as, like, a guilty pleasure. Like, they don't really take the genre seriously. Like, I remember I was watching a review on Pumpkinhead, and it was actually a really good review, and the guy was is talking about some of the deeper themes that are in Pumpkinhead, which was cool, but then he said something that really pissed me off. He said, okay, I know we're just talking about a horror film here, as if horror is not worthy of serious analysis. And I'm so sick of that. I'm so sick of people acting like horror is this lower form of entertainment. And there are even people within the horror fan base that act like this. Like, it's just this lower form of entertainment. And it's not worthy of any serious analysis. And that mentality has always annoyed the crap out of me. Because, yes, there are a lot of cheesy horror films out there that aren't really meant to be taken taken that seriously, but then there are like a shitload of other horror films out there that are meant to be taken seriously and, and are meant to be viewed on multiple levels. And I feel like a lot of the disrespect that the horror genre gets honestly comes from the 80s slasher films. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the 80s slasher films, but I really do feel like that's where a lot of these negative stereotypes relating to horror films really came from. And too many people, when they think of a horror film, only think of a slasher film, and that's it. And really, the genre is much wider than that. And that's one of the things I loved so much about this book is he really does analyze horror films on an intellectual level and he never once condescends to the genre. And another thing I really loved about this book is there are a lot of movies that William Burns talks about in this book that I have actually never heard of, but I'm definitely hoping to check out some of these films. So I would definitely recommend the book in that regard. Like, I feel like this book could definitely introduce a lot of people to movies that they might not have heard of before. And, like, I've always thought of myself as a horror movie buff, but... Honestly, there's a lot about the genre that I don't know, and there are so many people out there who know a lot more than I do, and honestly, reading a book like this 
really kind of humbles me in a lot of ways and shows me that, yeah, there are people who know a lot more than I do. But I actually really like that, though, because, once again, it introduces me to films that I'm not sure if I would have heard of had I not read this book. And the book is actually quite funny in certain parts, like, William Burns has a real sense of humor that really does come through in his writing in this book, and when he talks about something that he doesn't particularly like, the way he criticizes it is actually, once again, is actually quite funny. Now, if I were to have a complaint about this book or a criticism, I would say there are certain points where Burns puts certain movies on certain lists that I feel like really shouldn't be on said list. For example, he has a chapter in this book on the 13 most disturbing movies that aren't horror films, and on that list he lists, uh... Eraserhead, which I think is absolutely a horror film, and he even has told me that he does consider that to be a horror film, so I really don't get why he put it on a list of films that supposedly aren't horror films when that movie is absolutely a horror film. I think he said to me once that the reason he put it on the list was because he was because he feels like it's a movie that David Lynch doesn't like to consider a horror film, even though it is definitely a horror film. But I feel like he should have explained that a little bit more in the list. And in fact, the chapter right after that is a list of the 13 best art house horror films. And I actually feel like a movie like Eraserhead would have fit much better on that list. Also, on his list of the 13 most disturbing movies that aren't horror films, number one on the list is Sallow, or The 120 Days of Sodom. Now, that I could actually understand why some people wouldn't consider that to be a horror film, but I personally think that film is absolutely a horror film, but that one, I can understand why some people wouldn't call that a horror film. It is definitely a disturbing film. Also, in this book, he has a chapter on horror TV shows, and I shit you not, he actually talks about Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Now, yes, that show definitely has some horror elements, and I could see where you can make a case for that being, like, a kid's horror show, but I personally wouldn't really call Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? a horror show. However, I have long held the opinion that genre is not a set-in-stone thing. Sometimes genre can be a matter of opinion. So even though I personally wouldn't really call Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? a horror TV show, I could see where you can make the case for it being, like, a kid's horror show. Also, in this book, he has a chapter on the 13 best horror films about Satan, and one of the movies he lists on that list is actually the Tom and Jerry cartoon, Heavenly Puss. That one, I think, was kind of a stretch. I personally wouldn't really say that one was horror, but once again, genre can be a matter of opinion sometimes. But those are really my only real criticisms of the book. Everything else is just a difference of opinion. Like, for example, in this book he has a chapter on the 13 best horror film adaptations that are actually better than the book. And in that chapter, that's where I had the most disagreements with him on. But those are that's just a difference of opinion. And I really have no right to criticize another person's opinion. Opinion. Although, in this book, there is a chapter on the 13 best horror film soundtracks, and I'm a little offended that Candyman wasn't on that list. But other than those minor criticisms and a difference of opinion, in general, I really loved this book, and I highly recommend this book if you're into books on horror films and books on film criticism. I think you would really enjoy this book, and even though he does analyze these movies on an intellectual level, it's still very easy to read and very quick to get through. And once again, it's funny, too. His criticisms are actually really freaking funny. 
Now, in this book, I want to say that my two favorite chapters are the chapter on Godzilla films and the chapter on The Exorcist. I loved the chapter on Godzilla films because, if you can't tell from that, I'm a diehard Godzilla fan, and I loved reading his takes on certain Godzilla films. Interestingly enough, he didn't really talk about the original Godzilla, because he kind of feels like the original Godzilla is kind of in a category all on its own, and he was really focusing on all of the Godzilla sequels, or specifically 13 of what he felt were the best Godzilla sequels, but I loved that chapter. Even though I didn't agree with all of his opinions, I still loved the hell out of that chapter, and I also loved his chapter on The Exorcist, and he has somewhat of a different take on The Exorcist than a lot of other people do, and if you saw my review of The Exorcist, I actually had a little short review that he did on the film that showed up at the end of my Exorcist review, so if you've seen my Exorcist review, you would know what his takes on The Exorcist are. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend this. If you can get your hands on a copy of this, I would recommend giving this a read. And, yeah, here is my interview with William Burns. Enjoy. Uh, what possessed you to write a book on horror films? Well, um, I've always been a lifelong horror fan. Um, I always uh, enjoyed reading other books about horror and, and, and finding out other people's opinions and their takes on things, but also just recommendations of films. Because, you know, obviously there's so many films out there, you know, so there's no one person cannot, you know, uh, you know have a, their finger on every single horror film. So I always liked reading other people's opinions, getting um, recommendations about other films. So, again, I thought I, I you know, I would sort of add my voice to that, uh, to, you know, to that, um, um, you know, to the chorus of other people talking about horror films. And, um, like I said, I was just, I was just inspired by, um, two books in, in, in particular. One was called Cut Horror Writers on Horror Films, and that was a great book. I remember reading that in the early 90s, and it was, um, a collection of horror writers like Clive Barker, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other people that were in it. Well, I just remember the, the Clive Barker one being particularly interesting. But um, a bunch of horror writers who got together, I think Kelsey Chin, Quinn Yarbo might have been another one too, but anyway, um, and talking about their favorite horror films. And I was like, and it was brilliant. It was just such interesting insight into what, not only what makes a great horror film, but what could be uh, classified as a, as a horror film. And I think that really resonated with me that at the time I had a very narrow view of what horror films, you know, could be. And that book would just like mention so many interesting uh, other films that could be considered, you know, horror films. It's funny that you say you had a very narrow view of what horror mm -hmm. films could be, because I actually feel like, reading your book, that you have a very... You recognize that the genre is much wider than people give it credit for. Mm -hmm. Like, you list movies that, uh... You list Apocalypse Now, mm -hmm. which I know is not really considered to be a horror film. Right. How would, uh you would describe that. Do you consider that a horror film? Or well, Yeah, I mean, uh, war films are some of the most horrible, uh, horrifying films, you know, much more, much more, uh, I think, you know, what people went through, let's say, you know, in the Vietnam War, it's probably much more horrible than, you know, what, you know, people who, you know, get chased by Jason or something like that is, you know. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think my early reading in, in, in you know, the, that book, Cut Horror Writers on Horror Film, also there's a book called Immoral Tales that was really interesting that looked at sort of European uh, horror films. And those two books really opened up my uh, understanding of what a horror film could be. So that's what I really wanted to replicate in in, in my book, uh, this idea that, you know, we really need to, in order for the horror film to grow and to uh, evolve, we really have to expand the boundaries of what we uh, expect from a horror film and, and how we define horror films. Now I'm about to ask you a horribly cliched question. Sure. What got you into horror? Well, um, I don't. I can't think of anything in, like any spe specific thing. Maybe Scooby Doo, you know, <laughs> being a little kid. But I think I've always gravitated towards things that were different or or are um, uh, are fantastic. You know, in the sense of not like what I would see every day in my life. Like things that like you know that were different than what I was exposed to. You know, I grew up in a very you know boring suburban sort of you know 
parents went to work, we went on vacation, I went to school, everybody else in my neighborhood did the same thing, you know, so I think I was always gravitated towards things like superheroes, science fiction, horror, things that you didn't see every day that really sort of expanded the imagination and, and you know, uh, offered more possibilities uh, than uh, that were presented to me, I guess, as a child. Why do you feel horror is such a disrespected genre, even by its own fan base sometimes? Well, I, it's funny. I think that you could say that about American and maybe uh, English horror, horror fans and, and, and horror fandom. You know, because I think if you looked at other cultures, um, Italy, Japan, France, um, that those cultures have a much more um, wider um, definition of... Uh, reality and, and and sort of uh, experience, emotional experiences and psychological experiences and um, you know the barri the boundaries between the supernatural and like science isn't as sort of cut and dried and um, objective as let's say England or America. So I think in those countries, I think you know in those and and even like in Eastern uh, uh, cultures, that horror is seen as something that is not outside of the norm, but a part of the sort of formative experiences of, 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 of one's life. And in, in the United States, and I think in England, where you had a much more sort of uh, rational sort of post-enlightenment, um, you know, this, this focus on realism, you know, um, that in those countries, anything that isn't real, that doesn't seem to be practical, that doesn't seem to have some kind of um, connection with you know, the, the majority of people's realities is seen as being juvenile, seen as being stupid, is seen as being, uh, you know, unrealistic. I think that's really what holds back, is that the subject matter of horror, of course, usually is something that is supernatural, something that is outside the norm, something that is abject, something that is on the periphery of our experience. And I think that in certain cultures that might be more puritanical or, or see um, reality in a very narrow uh, lens or very narrow sort of um, uh, 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 you know way of looking at things. Um, that's why horror is sort of you know seen as being uh, juvenile or or you know a uh, waste of time because it doesn't square with what people see as being the important things in life. What for you? What makes a good horror film? And of course, there are so many different types of horror sure. films, so many different subgenres, and even horror can mix in with other genres. Mm -hmm. But what for you? What makes a good horror film? Well, first of all, first and foremost, I'm a big atmosphere, mood kind of horror fan. Like, I love films that pull you into their world, you know? And I think horror does that really well. That horror doesn't necessarily have to be a realistic depiction of, you know, uh, reality or, 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 you know, the world as it is, you know? So atmosphere, mood, creating its own world, creating its own... Um, uh, it, it's, its own trappings within, you know, the film itself. To me, so that's really, I like films that are very atmospheric, moody, um, style is big. I like, I love filmmakers who have a very distinctive style. I think that really helps in horror films to have something very sort of uh, distinctive in the way they look, you know. Obviously a good story is always really important. Um, characters that you uh, identify with, you don't necessarily have to sort of love or, or connect with, but identify with or can identify with their um, predicaments and what they're going through. But for me, I guess the most thing I really look for is style, mood, setting, atmosphere. That, to me, is the most important thing. Would you say horror has shaped you as a person or shaped your views in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, I, I think so. I think they've shaped my aesthetic views and, and my, my views about um, culture and um, the things that I enjoy in terms of um, literature, in terms of film, in terms of even music. You know, um, Philosophically, I'm not sure. You know, uh, or even spiritually, I'm not really sure about those things, you know. But um, especially, I guess, certain horror films that are more existential, that are more um, dealing with those kind of things. Lovecraft, I guess, has, has probably, out of everybody in, uh, or every figure in horror or, or, or you know, um, artist or, or writer or director or anything, I think, I think Lovecraft probably has, has influenced me the most in that way. Uh now, of course, both you and me have seen enough horror films to know that there are plenty of horror films that don't follow the cliches that people think of when they think of horror films. But, of course, there are a lot of horror films that do fall into these cliches. Sure. And what 
cliche that a lot of horror films follow do you feel is most detrimental in terms of how people view horror films in general? Well, I think I think the first cliche, I'll, I'll talk about the sort of a, a, a general cliche and then a more specific cliche, you know, that I've noticed recently. But um, in some, I think it goes, this goes back to the question you asked me about why horror is not seen as being important, as being um, meaningful. Because I think the general cliche about horror is that it has to be stupid, has to be dumb, has to be dumbed down can't be something that's intellectual. It has to be all about the sort of um, the physicality of things, you know, and that, you know, the horror fans are, are stupid, so therefore they'll take anything that is sort of, you know, shoveled into their mouth, you know. Like I think of the sci-fi movies, like on Sci-Fi Channel, those kind of movies. And just that shows such a lack of respect. And I think that's a cliche, that, that the horror is... Um, that the people who, fans of horror are people that sort of don't care. As long as it's got a slasher in it, as long as it's got a monster in it, well, then they'll, they'll just eat it, you know. And then the second cliche, more specific cliche that I've noticed in movies now, is the whole, um, my cell phone doesn't work. I don't have reception, you know, that kind of thing where, you know, because, and again, I understand that because of the, you know, of the, the proliferation of, of um cell phones, that yeah, I guess that would be true. You know, like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre probably would have ended in five minutes, you know, if people had cell phones back then, and they worked, you know. But um, but that just is annoying to me. It's like, you know, it, it, people always have to say now that they're not getting service, their cell phone's not working, their cell phone is out of range, you know. Also, too, the uh, ubiquitous um, Google search. Now, when people, like, you know, find out about something, you know, some horrible thing, you know, they have to jump on Google and they have to look it up. So, I guess technology has, you know, in some ways has made films better, and but in other ways have sort of taken some of the mystique out of, uh, especially horror films. Now, uh, what is a horror film that you would recommend to people who aren't horror fans? Like, what do you feel like is a film that really transcends the genre? Well, well, uh, The Exorcist, because it's my it's my favorite film. Um, but I think that's a film that just, to me, is, is, is so powerful on so many different levels, you know. And I think it could speak to any number of people. You know, I think a big... Um, um, you know, I think a lot of people look at that film and see it as a religious film, or it's a film for Catholics, or but it's a film for everybody. It's a film. It's about existential dread. It's about existential, you know, uh, despair. It's about repulsion. And it's about you know, f having faith in your fellow human being, not in your fellow Catholic or your fellow scientist or anything like that, but rather just faith in your fellow human being. So to me, The Exorcist is like the perfect film. Now. Uh what are some of your favorite horror comedies? Oh, that's a good one. Um, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Uh, Young Frankenstein. I love Young Frankenstein. I think Frank Young Frankenstein is brilliant. One of the best comedies of the 70s. Um, I guess Return of the Living Dead. Would you consider that a No, I would uh, definitely comedy? say that. That's something. a great one, too. That has a lot of really good... It's a very like, punk, at, uh, punk attitude to it. That was great. Um, uh, American Mule from London. That's another one I think is awesome. Shaun of the Dead. Um, oh, Army of Darkness. Which is, I still think is hilarious, you know. But yeah, there's, you know, there's, you know, I, I think that it, uh, people think just stringing along a bunch of cliches in a horror, and, and that makes a horror comedy, and that never does. It, you know, look at, you know, unfortunately the scary movie, you know, sort of how that sort of nosedived, you know, really quickly. But um, but horror comedy is very ha hard to do. I think that's probably the it's probably much harder to do a, a great horror comedy than a straight horror film. Now, uh, what are some of your favorite horror dramas? That's a good question, um, because I think a, a lot of times drama is at the heart of uh, any good horror film, you know, so Exorcist, obviously, Shining, you know, but um, I think we were just talking before, um, I recently rewatched Onibaba, the Japanese film, and that's like the drama between just three characters, the tensions between, like, the three characters in that movie are, it's almost like overwhelming, it's so oppressive, the film is amazing, but I guess like The Wolfman, I think that's a really good drama, you know, because it's, I think that... Um, you know, Lawrence Talbot's character is so tragic. Um, Dead Zone, another uh, film where just the, the tragedy of the main character, Audition, you know, that film, that's another one where you just, the, the, the protagonists, you just feel so sorry for them, you know. Uh, Let the Right One In, Babadook, those ones. I think any film in which the the main character not only goes through, because, you know, when we often think about, like, you know, the the, the the, tribute, the trials and tribulations of, of characters from horror films, it's mostly physical, right? You don't want to be stabbed by Jason, you don't want to be attacked by Freddy, whatever, you know? But I think in those films, the, the, the dramas come about where it's not just physical anxiety and dread and wounds, but psychological and emotional, you know? So to me, like somebody like Lawrence Talbot, uh, Christopher Walken's character in The Dead Zone, um, you know, the characters in Let the Right One In, you just feel so sorry for them, and they, they, they sort of address something that goes beyond the physical into the emotional and even the spiritual. To me, that's drama. Uh, what are some of your favorite horror action films? Uh, well, Aliens, right? Aliens, of course. You know, they live. 
you know, I don't know if you'd consider those sci-fi or horror, but th- those are awesome. Um, I guess Dawn of the Dead, you know, the original Dawn of the Dead, I think is a, is a really good uh, action film. Um, Jaws, Jaws is, is so exciting. Like that, the last part of Jaws is just one of the most, some of the most rousing filmmaking you'll like ever see. Um, also, um, um, Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. That the Shaw Brothers movie that they made with Hammer, that's a great one. I mean, you mix, you know, Hammer Horror and, like, you know, Chopsaki, you know, Kung Fu. I mean, you can't get any better than that. Uh, who are some of your favorite horror directors and horror actors, either working today or from the sure. past? Um, well, I, 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 I think, like, my favorite horror directors are probably, you know, people ones that everybody loves. John Carpenter, I think, is my favorite. Um, I love Argento, Dario Argento, Lucio Fulci. Um, Cronenberg, of course, Cronenberg is one of my all-time favorite horror directors. Um, uh, George Romero, um, Hitchcock, I guess you could say, right? So those are some of my favorite um, horror uh, directors. In terms of actors, um, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee. I love the the Hammer actors. I thought they just brought such a level of professionalism to it. You know, um, Colin Clive from you know from some of the original um, you know Universal films. Um, so yeah, I think I'm more of like, I like those classical actors in those roles. Now, a lot of the time horror can be used as a metaphor for things that are wrong in society or mm-hmm. wrong with politics or culture. And what do you feel like are some of the best examples of horror films that use the horror as a metaphor to make a social commentary? Sure. Well, um, the, the, we've talked about before The Exorcist, right? I think The Exorcist is, is uses horror as a metaphor for so many different things. Like I said, just the existential condition, you know, um, uh, The Shining uses horror to, uh, as a metaphor for, you know, the sort of abuses of patriarchy and the abuses of colonization. You know, I think Kubrick is brilliant in, in how he sort of uses the horror to sort of, you know, because I think King did a good job of, of talking, using the supernatural to talk about family. I mean, that's always a, a thing that, that King knows really well. But to me, like, um, Kubrick's use of, of, of horror and haunting and the past and ghosts to sort of bring up, you know, the ghosts of our, you know, collective, um, uh, you know, uh, our collective pasts in terms of the country itself, you know. So to me, those are the two films that, that where I think the use of metaphor is just perfect. It, it, it's literature. It's like it's on that higher level. What about stuff like Godzilla or... Oh, yeah, they absolutely. Live? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, They Live, you know. Well, like I said, I think that, um, like, something like Godzilla and They Live, it's more on the surface. I mean, I think the metaphor is... And, which is, and it's brilliant. It's more an explicit metaphor, you know. I mean, how could you not... How can you not see what Carpenter was trying to talk about in terms of uh, commercialism and globalization? You know, in, in they live, or or you know what um, you know Shiro Honda was trying to do in Godzilla in terms of you know the destructiveness of of, of the bomb and, and and you know the human folly of, of trying to control nature. So uh, those are brilliant, absolutely. But to me, the more sort of implicit things that you see, like I said, in Exorcist, in um, in uh, The Shining, in Rosemary's Baby. You know, like the more sort of implicit critiques, I think, are much more uh, are are just as interesting, if not more, much more, uh, more interesting, because you have to dig for it a little bit more. What for you are some of the most underrated horror films? Wow, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I think some of the early Cronenberg films are really underrated. I think like Videodrome. I think like Rabid, especially his first one, Shivers. I think those are brilliant, absolutely brilliant movies. Um, so I would say like the early Cronenberg films that I think a lot of people just think of Scanners because like a head blows up in the film. But like his other films are just are really, really super interesting films. You know, um, I think some of, um, I guess, Polanski's early films too, I think are really, really interesting. Knife in the Water. Um, Fearless Vampire Killers, I love. I know people see it as a comedy, but I think it's just a brilliant, you know, um, uh, depiction of sort of a different type of vampire, a different type of vampire mythos, you know. Um, there's a lot of them. There's, like, so many of them, you know. Um, you know, it's the Italian horror films that were, that were made were just uh, absolutely dazzling on the eye and, you know, just uh, the Japanese horror films. Like I, I, I think that Italian and Japanese horror films um, really deserve much more attention outside of fandom. Obviously, in fandom, people, you know, you know, love those films. But I think outside of fandom, they really deserve a lot more kudos. What for you are uh, some of the worst or most overrated horror films? Mm. I hate to say this, but I, like some of Wes Craven's films. I mean, I love like the first Nightmare on Elm Street and um, um, Hills of Eyes. I think like Wes Craven, some of the Wes Craven stuff. You know, I, I, I know like he's, because of Scream and some of the more high profile films that he's made, you know, I think that he, you know, has became the face of horror for a while, you know. Um, 
I think, like... I'm trying to think. Oh, James Wan. I think some of his films. I, some of them, and they're entertaining films, but I just don't think they're as you know, as as great as some people think they are. You know, but you know, I try to give all horror films the benefit. I love the genre, so I try to like you know give them all the benefit out and try to find something in the film that's redeeming. You know. Could you name some of your favorite non-horror films? Oh boy, um, there's so many of them. Um, I guess um, I'm trying to think some like that. Um, well, I guess like the films like uh, like Stanley Kubrick's films. I really like Stanley Kubrick's films. Um, Alejandro Jodorowsky, uh, Michael Haneke's films have been really wonderful. Um, the Nicholas Winding Refn, I think his films have really really been interesting. I really like Drive. Um, uh, Igmar Bergman, I love like the Igmar Bergman films, Fellini's films. I, I love you know those movies. Um, Nicholas Rogue's films, I really think he's an amazing amazing director. Um, I recently just rewatched uh, Taxi Driver again, and that movie's just unbelievable. Talk about a horror movie. You know <laughs> what I mean? That movie's just unbelievable. The performances, the way it's shot, just so much in that film is just brilliant, you know? Uh, I know you teach a class on horror films. Mm -hmm. What films do you show in that class, and how have students kind of gravitated towards those films, or how have they reacted sure. towards the films? Well, I've shown, uh, with The Exorcist, of course, I've shown uh, The Innocence, Jack Clayton's The Innocence I've shown. I've shown Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've shown The Shining. I've shown uh, Blue Velvet, Eraserhead, In the Mouth of Madness, John Carpenter's The Thing, uh, The Tenant, Rosemary's Baby. So I, I show, usually I keep like, I usually show six films uh, each semester. I usually keep three and, and kind of like, you know, um, uh, rotate out three. You know, I show Repulsion. Um, so I try to, and also too, is I try to show like films that people have known and sort of taken another take on those films, and then some, maybe some films that people haven't seen before, and they're being initially uh, exposed to them. But um, it's been really good. I've had really good experiences with the films. Um, I've had people who are really into horror take it and get something from it, but I'm much more interested in people who aren't into horror, who at first, uh, when they first hear about the class, are sort of very hesitant to think they're going to learn anything from it, they're going to be able to connect with it. And then at the end of the class, I'm coming to me and being like, wow, I really got something out of this. I, I look at horror films differently now, or, you know, um, I don't think of horror films as just being stupid, dumb films, but I see the, the worth in them. So it's been great. It's, a, it's, a, it's been a really in, enjoyable class. Now, uh, in your book, you have a chapter on Godzilla films, yes. which is actually one of my favorite chapters in the book. But you list that Crime Against Humanity, Godzilla's Revenge, is one of your favorite Godzilla films. Now explain yourself. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I guess that, that the explanation I have is nostalgia. I think um, it was the first um, Godzilla film I ever saw when I was a kid. It, it was a, a film about, it had, um, you know, a young boy in it who's, you know. I'm sorry. Oh my God. Will you be available in a little bit? Yeah. Later? Okay. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, like I said, there was, a, there was a little boy in the film that, you know, you identify with. He's being bullied and he sort of, like, you know, imagines himself with the monsters. Um, and, again, it was, one, it was the first film I think I was exposed to. I think a lot of... People my age probably, you know, who were into Godzilla, that might have been the first one because they seem to be on all the time, you know. So I guess nostalgia. Yeah, believe me, it's it's definitely not one of, you know, the artistic peaks of, of, of the series. But I think in terms of um, introducing younger people to the, all the different monsters, um, and also I think there's, like I said, a, a more human heart to the film because of the little boy that's in it that, you know, that you sort of see the movie through his eyes. All right. I still think it's a crime against humanity, <laughs> but... Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But, Absolutely. And speaking of Godzilla, what are some of your other favorite Godzilla films besides the original one, which I know you're a big fan yeah, of? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in, in, in the chapter in the book about Godzilla, I just I didn't write about because I think that's a, a film that deserves its own essay, it deserves its own chapter altogether, you know. And um, so what I did was I focused on some of the other films. But I love my favorites, the Godzilla vs. Spog Monster, Godzilla vs. Adora. I just love the, the look of the film. I love that it has... Again, it, 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 it has a, a larger sort of um, social aspect to it, of course, talking about pollution, but it goes out about, about it in a very different way than Ishiro Honda did with the first film. But I, you know, I like a lot of the ones that I think at times um, got some Godzilla fans have sort of dismissed some of the stuff from like the 70s. Like I like Godzilla vs. Gaigan, I like Godzilla uh, vs. Um, Mechagodzilla, the first one. You know, Terror Mecha Godzilla. I like those ones. I mean, they were like kind of out there, you know, maybe didn't fall into line with the typical expectation of what a Godzilla movie, you know, 
should be. But I just I thought it was I thought they they took you know even though some of them you know seem to be going a more kiddie aspect of it, um, some of them took some some chances in terms of the visuals, in terms of the soundtrack. Some of the soundtracks I thought were awesome. But I think that's my favorite um, era of Godzilla. It's kind of like the late sixties, early seventies Godzilla films. What are some of your favorite? Uh zombie films or vampire films like if you wanted to think in the sub-genres like whatever sure. uh in terms of zombie films well, i love the beyond like the, the fulci zombie movies are, are awesome i always I, I love those return of the living dead the romero one the romero zombie films uh let's sleeping corpses lie that one that jorge grau movie um yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because, you know, for a long time, there was, the zombie movies were kind of few and far between. But after sort of the Walking Dead phenomenon, you know, there just seems to be so many of them right now. You forget how powerful uh, a zombie movie could, could be, you know, and, and how, you know, um, how scary the, those films could be. Um, you know, like I said, I, I, I really enjoyed uh, I Walk With a Zombie, you know, the, the, the Val Luton, you know, um, you know, produced film. Um, I like films, and I, I wish that some of the zombie movies would go back to sort of exploring more of the sort of the voodoo kind of, you know, Caribbean sort of influence. I mean, the last one I can remember is probably like Zombie, right? The, the Lucha La Fucci one. In terms of the vampire movies, I love Nosferatu, of course, the original Nosferatu, you know, the F.W. Murnau Nosferatu. Um, I love, I even love the remake too. I think the Werner Herzog remake of that film is, is great. Um, uh, Horror of Dracula, I think is probably my favorite. Like, I love the, the first Hammer Dracula film. I love Christopher Lee as Dracula. I love Peter Cushing as um, um, Van Helsing. I lo- it's, it's just, I, it, everything about that movie is just perfect. I love it, you know. Um, when I didn't care for Dracula 3D, the Argento film, uh, that one I wasn't too crazy about. But, um, again, I think, I, I think vampire films... Oh, um, 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 30 Days of Night. I thought that was out of the more recent-ish horror films uh, in terms of vampires. I thought that was really good. Let the Right One In, another one that, that took another take on the whole vampire, um, you know, uh, metaphor. What are some of your favorite horror TV shows? Um, let me see. I'm trying to think of some. Well, I love the original Dark Shadows. I'm a huge, huge uh, fan of the original Dark Shadows. I thought that was such a, just a, an awesome show. Um, Call Check the Night Stalker. I remember seeing that when I was a kid. And I loved it. It was, you know, that, it was just a great, great show. Um, what else? I am a Walking Dead fan. I do watch The Walking Dead. I think that's that's a that's an interesting show. Um, but yeah, I think I think um, in uh, also in search of even though it wasn't really it was more of like a documentary type show. But I loved In Search of. I thought that show was just brilliant. You know, I remember seeing it as a kid and just being um, introduced to so many different sort of occult and supernatural and weird phenomenon kind of ideas through the reenactments on that show. You know, especially the Amityville Horror. That's my favorite one. Now, uh, what are you working on right now? Um, I'm, I'm sort of in the early stages of doing another um, book similar to the one I just put out with lists and essays, kind of covering things that I didn't get to cover in the uh, first book in this book. So um, looking at like Universal and Hammer kind of films more in detail, um, doing more stuff with um, uh, music. Well, I'm a huge music fan, so doing more stuff with the sort of um, with artists now that are sort of working in the kind of like horror music genre. Um, Talk. I also want to do an essay on the, the concept of the hauntology. This idea of um, of the past coming back to sort of haunt the present, and the use of ghost and specters as metaphors for you know postmodern times. So, um, like I said, probably more of the same of the last book, but just sort of maybe um, maybe not having the same sort of uh, scope of the last one, but going more in detail about specific um, you know uh, um, films and 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 artists and writers musicians well uh thank you for doing this interview uh it actually it's probably gonna end up being longer than the actual review okay, that i that's did okay. so. that's great. well thank you thank you friend i really appreciate it and i love your reviews christian i think you're an awesome awesome uh, horror reviewer you're very very perceptive. you don't have to lie nah, stop it <laughs>